Hello, today I'm going to do some more work with the Falstad circuit simulator and what I want to do is revisit the op amp based relaxation oscillator because I'm still learning how to use Falstad and I found a slightly simpler way to do it and I want to make another modification that well it doesn't improve its uh, operation but just makes the voltages look like what we expect. So here goes, I'm at the Falstad Circuit Simulator. If you want to follow along, just go to falstad.com slash circuit. That will bring you here. And then the next thing we want to do is go full screen. So go over here to file, click it, and then go to toggle full screen. And there we are ready to go. And the circuit I want to work with is already available. So I'm going to click on circuits and go to op amps and then slide over under op amps, I want to look for oscillators and then slide over to relaxation oscillator. And there's our circuit right in the middle of the page where we want it. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these grounds. So right click and delete, right click and delete. And of course our circuit just stopped working as reflected in the oscilloscopes down below. Now what I want to do is put a potentiometer here tied to the voltage rails so that I can make this a variable duty cycle oscillator. So what I did before, as you may recall, I made a couple of batteries, made a couple of 15 volt batteries and put a potentiometer between them because I cannot get to the voltage rails. What I found out is that I don't need to put batteries in here like I did. I can do it much simpler as I will show here in a moment. So if I click on draw and go to inputs and sources before I used a two terminal voltage source. I'm going to now use a one terminal voltage source. So this is going to be more like we often draw circuits. So I want a minus 15 source and I dragged from bottom to top and I put my voltage at the top. So what I'm going to do is drag top to bottom and that puts my voltage at the bottom. Now what I need to do is just drag these to the right place. So click draw and drag and drag selected. I want this one to be up here and this one to be down there. And that's about where I want them. I'm going to eventually put an op amp in here. So I'm leaving some space. In fact, I'm going to move these over a couple of notches. But all I have to do now is just put my potentiometer in between. Now I want plus 15 and minus 15 volts. So I right click on there, click on edit and change that to 15 volts. Click OK. And then I go down here, click on edit and change that to minus 15 volts. Now what I want to do is put a potentiometer between them. So I click on draw, passive components, add potentiometer and click there drag down to there. I've got the arrow to the right side where I want it. Let go. And I have a current flowing through the potentiometer. So I got the connection correct first. Sometimes I have trouble making the connection down here and I have to leave it short and draw in a wire. But this time it worked first try. So all I have to do now is connect these grounds over here, what should be grounded over to the potentiometer. So I want to go over to draw add wire, go up to here, click and drag to the middle. And then I'm going to click and drag to the potentiometer and then go back over here, click and drag to there. And the circuit should now be working. And there it is. Let's speed up the simulation just a hair. That's what I like. Okay, so there's our output. There is our capacitor, the green charging and discharging, and the yellow is going to be the current through the capacitor. And I can look right here for the frequency. So when I say I'm waiting for the frequency calculation, I'm watching right where my cursor is sliding back and forth down here where the frequency is shown. So this is basically a voltmeter, two oscilloscopes, and a frequency counter right there. Now it's proved that we can change our duty cycle. So we want to move this potentiometer. We go over to the right over here and drag this resistance bar. Let's drag it to the left 
and drag it way to the left so we get a dramatic change in our duty cycle. And we look down on our oscilloscope down here, we see we do have a long duty cycle now. It is at the high voltage for a longer time than it is at the lower voltage. And if we drag that over to the other side, we get just the opposite. We get to the low voltage longer than we are at the higher voltage. So we now have our variable duty cycle oscillator. So the problem I had though, which isn't really a problem, the circuit works. I didn't like the voltages I was getting because we have this between where our ground should be and our true ground. And I'm going to change this just to make things a little more dramatic to a 10, let's make it a 100K resistor. So I right click then click edit, change our resistance to 100K that will cause us to use less current. And it changed the frequency since we added to our voltage divider over here that changes the voltage of the trigger point here. So this is taking a little longer to charge and discharge because we changed that. The other thing it did is even though the output, if I put my cursor here and if you look down to the right, you can see that my voltage is 15 volts minus 15, 15 minus 15. But I would like this to be half the voltage, which it would be if this was grounded. But if we look here, it's going to be minus 12, uh, minus 12 or 13 or plus 12 or 13. So it's not what I expect. It should be seven and a half. And then over here, we should have ground and it's 10 volts, 12 volts. So it's going all over the place because it's being affected by the capacitor. So what I'm going to do is make an artificial ground by putting a op amp in here. Now what's the definition of ground? Ground would be zero volts, plus it must be able to source and sink significant current without the voltage changing. And with the small currents I have here, an op amp will be sufficient to source and sink those currents. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this wire here, right click it and click delete. So now we no longer have that wire there and I'm going to put an op amp there. So I'm going to click on draw, active building blocks and go to op amp, ideal op amp. And I want the inverting input on top. So there we go. That's the way I like to do my op amps. And if I draw it, there we go. There's our op amp. And I'm going to click on draw, drag, drag selected and move this op amp exactly where I want it, which is right there. I want the non-inverting input in line with my potentiometer. Now we're going to add it into the circuit. Click draw, add wire. And I want to put a wire between the non-inverting input and my potentiometer. And I want to make this into a voltage follower. So I'm going to click on the output and drag a wire to there click and drag a wire to there, click and drag a wire to there. So now the output voltage will be the same as the input voltage. Now the input has a very high impedance, so it's not going to take much current. So it doesn't care that this is a very high resistance and it's not going to change that voltage much because it's not going to demand any current. But the output impedance is low, meaning that it can source and sink a significant amount of current, only maybe 40 or so milliamps for an op amp, but that's all I need to make my artificial ground here. Now let's see if I can connect up over to there. Click on draw, add wire. I'm going to click here and drag over to there. Oh, well, yeah, I was afraid of that. Notice I was not able to make the connection. It wants me to make it down here a little, so I'm gonna have a bit of a crooked wire. I just dragged it down. Now it looks pretty. Okay, so I'm actually connected right here, not right there. Because when you click and drag these wires, you have to leave the ends of them exactly where you want to connect. You can't connect to the middle of a wire. So I just actually have this wire going to here and then another wire going down to there. And I have my connection to where my ground should be. So this should act like an artificial ground. Let's start over here at the output. And if you look at the voltmeter over here, we will see that we're 15 volts minus 15, 15 minus 15. 
Now I should expect at the junction between these two resistors, it should be half that voltage because the resistors are equal and it's acting as a voltage divider. So I put my cursor there and if you look down to the right, you see it's 7.5 volts minus 7.5. 7.5 minus 7.5. So it's doing exactly what we expect. And this should be at zero volts because this is being held at zero volts because it's a voltage follower and because it has a low impedance can therefore source and sink significant current without the voltage changing, it should be held at zero volts. And if you look over to the lower right, you will see that it is zero volts. So we just have an artificial ground, which makes this a little cleaner, but it doesn't really change the circuit. As I go over to the right here and change my potentiometer, you'll see it still acts pretty much the same. Drag it to the left, I get a long duty cycle. Drag it to the right. I get a short duty cycle. Wait for it, wait for it. I'm going to speed this up a little bit just so I can show that it still changes the frequency when I change the duty cycle. Let's put it right about there. So let's put the duty cycle at about 50% by putting the potentiometer right at the middle. If we look over at the potentiometer, it's 50k over 50k right over here. And my frequency is 113 hertz. And I should get a lower frequency if I change the duty cycle. If I make it longer or shorter, I should get a lower frequency. So let's drag it over to the left. Gives us a long duty cycle and wait for it to calculate the frequency. And it went down to 64 hertz from about 111. Let's put it in the middle again. It was, wait for the frequency calculation. And it's 112 hertz, 113. And then if I drag this to the right to shorten the duty cycle, wait for the calculation. And right here, if we see that I have a 67 hertz frequency again. I think the next thing I may do is build my proof of concept switching regulator using this. This is not the best way to make a switching regulator, but I can monitor the output and I can make a feedback circuit with a filter such that if the voltage goes up, I can shorten the duty cycle. And if the voltage goes down, I can lengthen the duty cycle, keeping the voltage constant here, even if I have a load pulling it down or otherwise changing it. So that may be my next simulation video. So I hope you found this useful and informative. And thank you for supporting Vocademy. And thanks for watching.